next on The Professional Rule Breaker. Hey, hey, this is Scott Ferguson with Time to Shine Today. And if you really want to learn how to think outside the box and ignite your business and life, you should be listening to The Professional Rule Breaker Podcast with my good friend, Kathy Walter House. I do, and you should too. Let's level up. Well, welcome back to the Professional Rule Breaker Show. I'm your host, Kathy Walterhouse. And I am super excited because I have a friend of mine today. And I think after you listen to this show, he's going to become a friend of yours too. He is known for the phrase level up. He is also a mental conditioning coach, lifestyle optimization artist, relationship creator, it's a mouthful, micro-influencer, and the host of the top two globally ranked Time to Shine Today podcast. And he is on a mission to ensure that no one ever feels like they have no one. So I want to welcome to the show my friend, Scott Ferguson. Hey, Dub, how are you? Hey, I am doing great. Yay. I'm doing great. <laughs> so stoked to be here. It was so fun off the mic chatting with you. And we're like, you're like my sister from another mister. Like we have so many things in common from our rescue pets to, uh, I guess like, I just immensely respect you and like you miss actress and everything. I watched a movie with you in it. So it's like, I'm just so <laughs> stoked just to be Ooh, here. You're you know, I rocked the mic with you. I believe it's an episode 416 on Time yes. to Shine today. Don't go there yet, people, but make sure you check it out. It That's awesome. right. That was a great episode. That so was a fun. really great episode. Yeah, yes. because I have been, we're going to digress a little bit, but I've been bugging you because I'm like, we need to have a live radio show after right. that. So when, <laughs> when we're all done with this, we'll put it in the show notes as well. Yes. We'll put that episode in there and then you guys can tell us, what do you think? Yeah. So <laughs> like to hear. That's right. That's right. So I want to start off with something I said in the introduction. Mm -hmm that you are on a mission to ensure that no one ever feels like they have no one. Right. Where does that come from? You know, I was born in 1972 in the Philippine Islands. It was during the Vietnam War. It was in basically at the time, American GIs were going there. And, you know, before they went to Vietnam, they kind of hang out in port and knock women up or whatnot. And my mom got knocked up by an American uh, GI. And at the time, male mixed breeds were frowned upon. They were literally taking the the male male mixed breeds. The they were taking the babies from the mom and shipping them to Spain because Spain controls the Philippine Islands, right? And the reason why they did is I'm six one, I'm two thirty five, I'm pretty well put together, and they didn't want to have that many big people, you know, mixed breed looking people coming wow. in and possibly taking over the country. So my mom, I literally was smuggled out of the Philippines by an Air Force couple that were going to take me to the United States. His tour was done. He was going to go back to the United States. We come back to the United States. And the woman who's going to adopt me, her father gets sick. She, he dies. She goes schizophrenic. They're like, we can't raise this kid. You know, so they put me in an orphanage in California. Uh, a couple of years later, I was adopted by my parents, who Larry and Diane, who are my world. Uh, but they were my... Larry was a product of the Vietnam War where he drank a lot and they were both alcoholics, couldn't raise me. So I kind of bounced around from house to house and there's wow. a lot, ton of abandonment issues. So that's really kind of where that comes from is I fast forwarded through life, you know, when it's, I had uh, pretty, I excelled at sports, um, scholarships were an option, but my 1.4 grade point average didn't allow anything, you know, to happen <laughs> with that. So I went in the military. Darn, right? <laughs> right. And in the military is where I found my first really kind of close, close family, right? Where I didn't feel like an outcast, where my skin is darker. You know, my family's, you know, from the kind of like Northern Alabama, you know, the kind of feelings of that. Um, although we lived in Michigan and I didn't feel like I fit in as much. I love them and they loved me, but I just didn't feel, but in the military is where I really found a family. And I just vowed that I'm not gonna, and things that happened when it's in there that you didn't think you would ever do for somebody else or them do for you. It's just like, dude, I don't wanna have anybody be alone period. You know, as I went through life, I struggled with abandonment. Um, but I just had that family to lean on. I mean, I talked to you off mic. There's 11 of them in town right now. We're going to the Honda Classic and <clears throat> here in South Florida to watch the tournament. We do it once a year. You know, these are guys that literally we went to, you know, war with mm -hmm. and we get to hang out and, uh, you know, and just 
that and we talk about how it's there and, and frankly k-dub they the only reason why we really reconnect is because of facebook you know 2006 i mean it was like boom you know it's like everybody could find each other so yeah that's kind of, kind of my backstory on that question though okay it's kind of interesting because i think a lot of times the experiences that we have in life mm. especially i would say the good ones help too mm -hmm. but the ones that might be really intense or there's some sort of pain stuck in you makes a difference in your life and i always tell people you can let it affect you and drag you down mm. or you can use it to make yourself stronger, Thank you. right? Perfect. And I yeah. think that's what you've done. Because, you know, it's interesting when you were saying a few of those things. I mean, you know, I was very lucky to have um, a, a great family growing up. But I also come from an immigrant family, legally immigrated, wow. <laughs> I should say. From where? From Cuba. Okay, wow. Okay. So, and I was, I was born here in the States. And so where we ended up, we were obviously a little different than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. I, would have, um, I mean, you're stunning, but I would have never have pegged you for a Latina, ever. Nobody so. ever knows. And all for all you, I know we're really going off topic this time. That's fine. <laughs> this, will, this will be like is... our radio shows like, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's right. For everybody who's listening, not watching. Yeah, I mean, I, I th think I just have this very ambiguous look. Yeah. Nobody's ever been able to figure out where I come from, which oh, I kind of yeah. like. I'm yeah. kind of like I can move in and out of just about anything. You can. <laughs> and you're a phenomenal actress. I mean, it's amazing. It's so cool. When Thank I you. when I got off the mic with you, I went and checked that. I was like, man, she's got skills. It was really oh. awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate it. Um, I think I told you I took a break mm -hmm. for about a year because yeah. I just was frustrated. And it was the best thing ever. Yeah. Came back with a vengeance this year. I've already filmed a couple of things. That's learned awesome. a big lesson. Yeah. My big lesson that I learned was stopping perfect. Yes. Here I help people with that. And yet mm -hmm. myself, I was always trying to be perfect. Yep. In every audition, every move, every word, every whatever had to be perfect. Love that. And yeah. so I changed that. Thank you. And look yeah. what happens. And so that's a lesson for everybody that's out there listening. Just do it do whatever it is yeah. that you want you know that you have this passion for don't worry if you don't know how yeah. to do it right yeah, yeah. because Done's better than perfect sometimes right and you you're going to learn along yeah. the way you know yeah. and if all the people that are really really successful um out there if they waited until they knew the solution to get there i mean you just think of richard branson elon musk you know even jeff bezos mm -hmm. all those guys edison yeah, yeah if they waited guess what we wouldn't have we wouldn't any have of those one. things thank you yes, yes. yeah, yeah they it, just it, went for it they went that's for why it. my coach has me do a lot of improv like there's mm. a great improv schools here and she has me going and taking improv every thursday night and it's like it, it's critical because i will try to be perfect and improv forces me to, to not be, be perfect <laughs> you know it, it's it, it's <laughs> a lot of fun so um, it is i love improv yeah yeah. I'd love to do improv with you one day. You know, it's just like it's so many steps that I would pick up. It, it, yeah, it's it's so Maybe fun. Maybe we'll I look do that and it. we'll record it and we'll <laughs> put it go. out there for everyone there to watch. There you go. That'd be great. <laughs> you guys can let us know if that's something that you want to see. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So let's get back on track here. This is why I said we should have a live radio right. show. But yeah. anyway, you use the mantra level up. Mm -hmm. I, I know what that means to me. Sure. Yeah. I want you to tell me what it means to you. Yeah, yeah it's <clears throat> level up came, became a joke. When I was in the military, the uh, Nintendo and Sega were really big back then, you know, and I'm dating myself by saying it because I was in the military from 90 to 97. So basically I would want to go- You're not that old, so stop talking that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Basically, I would want to go work out, go to the beach. I stationed in San Diego, Seal Beach. It was fantastic. I'd be like, hey, I'm going to go out there. Like, hey, man, we're going to sit here and level up. And, and I'm like, you guys are, what? You know, it, you guys are idiots or whatever. You know, I was like, I'm going to go work out. But it just stuck with me. I'm like, every time I go do the weights, 
or whatnot, I would be like, let's level this up. Let's do more. Let's do more. So this is like from an early age when I'm just saying turned 21, 93. So it's like from that age, I was just always level, let's level up and where people would actually get sick of it. But then it just, you know, within my real estate brokerage, you know, that the big sign is there to level up. Everybody just has to do something every day that is going to progress them and understand that, you know, the decisions and not conditions are going to determine your destiny, right? So it's like you make the decision to level up and that that will be your destiny, you know, and mm -hmm. the lack of resources is never the problem. You have to be resourceful, right? Yep, so absolutely. Yeah, so it's like, that's what level up really means to me is just being one step better or 1% better than the person, you know, the day before. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. Hey there, you know, I'm all about making a big difference, making this really big impact. So I am so thrilled to introduce to you today's podcast sponsor. They are the very last U.S. family owned manufacturer of consumer goods products, products that you use every single day and you run out of them every single day. And on top of that, their products are healthier and safer for you. And they have been made here in the great USA. My family made the switch and I am so happy that we did. And so is everyone else in the family because the products are amazing. So while these big giant corporations are just getting bigger and so many small businesses are really struggling to survive, why not help me in rooting for the underdog? And you know, I'm all about the underdog instead of these giant 11 conglomerates that control 97% of the North American consumer goods market. So if you're ready to make a difference and switch away to something bigger and better, go to switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker, drop your information and one of my friends will reach out to you directly and let's all switch away together to better quality products that are healthier and safer for you and support family owned businesses because together we can rewrite the business landscape and make a difference one person at a time. How did you come up with that though, really? Like this whole mm -hmm. concept, because like, I know you, you, you use it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's almost like you, I wouldn't say it's your brand, but it's your no, it's thing. Not my brand, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just bought into it so hard at a yeah. young age that, you know, and I say I make two New Year's resolutions every day. Or I'm sorry, every year since I was like, wow, that's amazing. So, every day, yeah, right? Every year <laughs> for that I do every day, and it's one, make someone smile every single day, and Ooh, two, I unless I've hurt you, disrespected you, owe you, or judge you, I don't care what you think about me. Okay, so by doing that, it allowed me to level up consistently. You know, as long as I'm coming from a place of service where I'm, you know, serving that. I just really bought into that. I was saying level up before people were really saying it. So it's not my brand or anything, but I just do say it. I'd rather, I'll say it and they'll be like, oh, they affirm you level up. And, and again, you say that I haven't hurt you, disrespect you, owe you or judged you. I don't care. I'm still going to say it to you because that's what I want you to do, right? Yeah. Uh, on, a, on a constant. And I, you know, you and I believe, you know, our vibe attracts our tribe. So we surround ourselves with people that level up on a consistent basis. I mean, you and I will text back and forth, just funny stuff that, you know, that's leveling us up. Right. Yep. And yep. that's the people that you want in your life. Right. And, Cause if you get fed that every day. Yes. It compounds like the oh say, right? right. I mean, it just does kind of, it's impossible for it not to compound. Yeah. So because kind other, of, yeah. yeah. Otherwise it goes the other direction, right? right? There's that one saying that you are the sum total of the, the five, five people, people that yeah. you hang out with. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You know, 100%. when I first heard that, I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. But I really, the more, as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. I've realized, yes, absolutely. So if you spend your time around people that um, just drag you down yeah, yeah, or the people that just sap your energy, I did yeah. that yesterday. I was with someone for about an hour 
that that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And eventually we were able to turn it around, mm -hmm. but boy, oh boy, like if you were to spend all day with people that sap your energy. Yeah, yeah. I don't just, allow that energy vampires to creep in on yeah. me. I mean, am I guilty of it? Yeah, you know, but I also have a fantastic fiance that mm -hmm. is always cheerful. I have a, a rescue pit bull that is, they consistently remind me with that. And just to have the squad that I surround myself with here in South Florida. And, and, and we're on the Eastern seaboard. So I'm from the Midwest like yourself. So my squad down here is a lot different with regards to New York, Boston, Philly. Right. And those guys are leveling up all the time with all that the time. edge, you know, yes, so, with an edge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny with that because, you know, my day job has been a real estate broker for 27 years. Right. And I would, you know, um, when I first moved to Florida, I would go up and hug them. And they'd be like, get the hell away from me. What are you doing? You know, Midwest, when I meet you in, in person, I'll hug you. You'll hug back and be like, oh, cool. It's no big deal. It's expected. And, and so I did a deep dive. I'd like almost cry. I'm like, why don't these people like me? And But they live on top of each other there, right? They're, um, they're so close in proximity that they just yeah. want their distance. Once yep. I respected that, leveled up and respected that, then now some of my best friends are from Brooklyn and Boston and, you know, Philly and, and whatnot. So it's leveling up as a consistent, it's like kind of like Kaizen, it's consistent progression on a daily, you yeah. know, it's what it is Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to go back a little bit to something you said yeah. about not caring mm -hmm. what people think of you. Right. I actually think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. I mean... Because I think if, because uh, you're not in your head, you're not worrying about, you can be yourself, mm -hmm. right? Instead of trying to be this fake person that's going to make everybody happy. Right. And, and I don't think when you do that, A, you can't make everybody happy. You can never make everybody happy. Yeah. But worst of all, I think you can't make yourself happy when right. you're like that. Um, our, our heads are already talking to us way too much. <laughs> You're right. You know, with my, with my <laughs> clients, I one of our exercises really is to turn that voice off and not listen to it and talk to yourself. You know, you're already having that enough, bringing you down. I'm saying that air quote. So it's already trying to the doubts that creep in and, and stuff that's happened from the past. I mean, every client that I meet for the first time in person, if I'm blessed to coach them in person, is I put them in their driver's seat in their car and I sit in the other in the passenger seat. And I say, see that rear view mirror right there? That That's your past. It's small for a reason. That's where therapy is. I can't help you there. But it's a great place to learn from. And it's a great place to visit for the good memories. This dashboard here is huge. It's gigantic. It's scary. That's your future. You're like, oh, my gosh. But you look at that on the, the, the console of Cars Built 2011 and after, there's this thing called a GPS. Mm -hmm. And that's what I am. And so when, you know, I if you want to, you know, put your seatbelt on. Great. That's your choice. If you want to, you know, you have to start the car and put it in gear. I can't get you there, but I can always give you an attitude of gratitude, a, you know, the push forward, the guide, mm -hmm. if you will. So yeah, that's, I don't know. I just care so much about people <laughs> that if they don't, aren't happy with how I am, I'm okay with it because I'm authentic. Mm -hmm. I'm genuine. And when they're driving their car and we're moving forward, I want them to be the same thing because if yeah. they're, you know, fake, I mean, sometimes you have to tell yourself so many times before you can get there. And again, that's talking to yourself, you know, burning into that subconscious, but you know, it's just a, again, I just don't care. Like what if, you know, I've had people say, Oh, you're a little too much. I'm like, well, I love you anyways. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I've been disinvited to, to places and, and I understand why just because their vibe is a little bit different than what I would bring. You know, and there's probably events that I throw that I'm not inviting certain people, you know, because yeah. I want to make sure the vibe stays good. So it's just, I'm authentic to myself and I'm coming from a place of love. And I'm good with it. Yeah. So interesting that you uh, said something about turning down all the talk, the self-talk. Because mm. um, I was actually listening to something yesterday about that mm -hmm. and about turning down all this randomness of things in your brain mm -hmm. in the most part. And what's interesting is, is when you do that, then not only are you more present, but you notice more 
mm, of everything yeah, else. Absolutely. And I think when you notice more of everything else, you notice more opportunities. Right. As well. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and hundred percent. It, it's just you're open when you're present. You're open to what you could be missing. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's just if you're listening to the voices in your head, they're like, "Oh, you can't do that." Oh my gosh, there's three thousand people. You're going out in front of Fergie. I, I you know, you, you're <laughs> not. You're, you're the most you ever spoke in front of was three hundred before. You know, and you and basically you have to give yourself that grace and space to to move forward. You know, with that, and again, surround yourself with the right tribe that will be there for you in those times of need. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you think people are um, are stuck? Meaning, and, and meaning, because I, I have people come to me and say, I'm really stuck. Mm -hmm. How can you help me with this? <laughs> they, they, I, it's funny you say that because I, I think being stuck is really listening to those voices instead of becoming present. And with that, I, I really believe the mind follows the body a lot more than the body follows the mind on certain things. So what I really do is I don't want to talk all TR, Tony Robbins too much, but I really work on changing their state. Uh, yeah. or have them work on changing their state with cold showers, uh, really kind of hyperventilating, breathing, kind of Wim Hof method to really kind of get them into a different mindset, a different feeling throughout their whole body. And once that happens, the mind will start kind of, if you do it on a consistent basis, and I'm not the easiest coach because I will hold you very much really? accountable. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> I mean, I can show you, I have, I have 15 text clients and they must text me by 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. I don't care if you live in California, send it at 5.30 because I want to read what's going on with them. And I have a, a protocol to what they send. And when they're starting to do that, their state changes and then the stuckness starts to go away. But I think kind of being stuck is a selfish mm -hmm. victim mentality. And I'm not saying that to make anybody mad, but it's the truth. You know, you're inside your own head instead of out there serving others. And that's yep. where I really think it can it can help for you. But a lot of it, again, K-Dub, it, it comes to changing the state of your body, getting moving, getting hydrated, getting lit. You know, living in South Florida, it's a lot easier for me than other people. But, you know, there's white light therapy. I mean, there's stuff that you can really do to change your state. It's almost, um, you know, I think of like a, the cold, like a cold plunge or anything mm, like that. I got or it. Or even a cold shower. Yes. It's almost like... Um, I hate to say this, but like shock therapy. Yes. Because if you do this, like I will do this thing where I'll be in the sauna, then I immediately go turn on cold water, mm -hmm. you know, take mm -hmm. a cold shower. Sure. If that will awaken you yeah. on so many different yeah. levels. And then when you're done, it, I mean, at first you're kind of like, why am I doing this mm -hmm. <laughs> type of right. moment? But then when you're done, you're like, okay, let's go. Yeah. Like it changes your mindset. It changes your attitude. It wakes you up. You're ready to go. Yeah. Um, and if you had, we're having a sluggish morning or for whatever reason, mm -hmm. right? Right. We're, it gets you going. We're either hunters or we're prey in, the, in this mm -hmm. life, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you get into that cold punch, and that's, that's what I do. I immediately get up. And I get into, you know, I, I do my, my breathing and then I, I have a nice cold punch and I get in it and it's, it's around 52 degrees. It's cold. Okay. It's but cold. Yeah, what's happening really is cold. that, that blood is going to your vital organs to keep you alive. Right. But when you get out that, that oxygen saturated blood is going to the extremities. And then I also have a huge believer in rebounders. If you ever see me speak, I have a trampoline on stage. Mm -hmm. And if you're an inch off the rebounder, you're at zero gravity. You hit that rebounder, you're at four times the gravity, right? So when we're sleeping, our heart purifies our blood, but our lymph system where all that stuck is stuck, it's a one-way valve. So the rebounder gets it out there. So I have ox super oxygen saturated blood right under the rebounder. And, and again, going back to the, the hunter and the prey, when you get in that ice bath, you are in a fight or flight kind of you know, mentality, right? You yep. conquer that, you fought. You're no longer prey. You yep. get in, you change that state, you clean out your lymph system, and then you're ready to go. That's something, if you can change your day, start your day changing your state. And it's not easy, man. If we don't seek discomfort, discomfort will find us, period. You know, we've got to seek discomfort. If not, we're going to get old. We're going to be taking medications, and, you know, it, it, and it's just going to be impossible. I don't want, unless God takes me in a car wreck or a plane crash, 
or something. It was my time that he calls me home. Okay. I'm living a long time. I'm going to give yeah. a lot of people hell in the nursery. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I think there's a lot, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but there's a right. lot you can do with your health so yeah. that you don't end up. Right. Um, yeah, we're not, we're, we just won't even go down no, this no, because like yeah. that could be a long rabbit hole, but I just want to say something. And again, same thing, not to go too much in the whole Tony sure. Robbins. Cause you know, Tony Robbins, I don't, um, now I think he does the karate chop on, on a board that most mm -hmm. people think they can't break a piece of, of wood. But at one time he was always doing the firewalks, right? We do Where, it every year here. When we oh, okay. Does yeah. he still, cause yeah. I, um, I don't know if he still does it or not, but, mm -hmm. but that. I think is similar to doing a cold plunge. Absolutely. Because you yeah. have that moment of going, oh, I don't know if I could do this. You right. know, it's that, it's that pause that you're like, no, no, don't do it. You know, your brain's going, don't do it. It's going to be really cold. Don't do it. Right, don't do it. Right. Don't do it. And then you're like, you make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, I have a big thing that I talk about, um, non-negotiable, like mm. make things non-negotiable. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I make that non-negotiable. I'm like, no, let's go and, and, and just do it. And of course mm -hmm. there's that shock of everything, but mm -hmm. a non-negotiable will get you, you know, whatever you set up as your non-negotiable. You build your, you build your, who your non-negotiables become who you are. Yes. Period. 100%. Exactly. I mean, your I life a, right now yeah. is a reflection of what you um, are comfortable with, mm -hmm. whether you think it is that way right. or it's not. It really right. is. It so really, keep stretching really is. that comfort zone, right? Yeah. A lot yeah, of people absolutely. are like, I'm going to get outside. I'm like, just stretch it. You don't have to do every inch by inch. It's a cinch, right? Yeah. By the yard, it's hard. You don't have to yep. just jump right out of it. When I start coaching somebody, I'm not going to be like, okay, this is what we're doing. No, you're going to start with a cold shower. You know, yeah. and then I'm going to send them links if they're able to buy a cold punch, even the $150 one, whatever. Then, but I'll keep them inch by inch to cinch. You know, I mean, in, in I want them to fail. You know, I want them mm -hmm. to really, and when they fail, fail forward. You know, I, I want you to go out there and fail and just keep moving, but just keep trying. So my non-negotiables. I'm very strict with my morning routine. 90, 90 minutes to two hours is my time. Period. Because the rest of the day is all about everybody else. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to make time for yourself. Mm. Um, if you don't make time for yourself now, eventually it's, it's going to catch right. up for you. Will. It yeah. will discomfort, you. you don't seek discomfort. Discomfort will seek you. That's something that someone told me about five years ago. And I was like, man, that's so true. You know, because yeah. you just start, you're feeling these aches and pains. I'm like, wait a minute, dude, I shouldn't feel this stuff. But mm -hmm. it's just, it's you not doing enough to keep that at bay. Yeah. You know, father time's undefeated, right? Yep. We're all going to, you know, move on. But yeah. it's, yeah. It's One thing certain in life. About, right? Taxes. <laughs> death. <laughs> taxes and death. Yes. Boy, that sounds a little morbid there, but let's. <laughs> it's okay. So let me, I'm going to ask you some um, questions. I just mm -hmm. want some quick responses. Sure. So what did you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> when I was younger. I, th that's a funny thing. Kathy, I didn't know what I wanted. I, I wanted to be a professional athlete, okay. you know. But yeah. that, that's probably what, if I had to throw an answer out there, that's probably would be it. Okay. All right. And if you had to pick one thing, just one thing that affected you really profoundly in any way, what would that be? Good or bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My brother's suicide. It was, oh. it was, it rocked me. The core, I mean, wow. you, you donated, you know, to come on the show. It's suicide mm -hmm. prevention lifeline. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that really wrecked me because I printed money in the real estate. And basically if you pinky promise, you made a hundred thousand a year and you pinky promise you had good credit, you were getting a house. Right. Yeah. And then the market crashed around 07, 08. And then my brother, you know, you know, took his life in 09. That was the, that was it. You know, I, I did go into my funk, um, went to Fiji and lived in a volcano for 30 days. I, I just kind of, kind of disappeared. But you needed to do that at that did. time. Yeah. So that's yeah. that was really life changing. That's when I started Time to Shine Today. That's my my mom became my first subscriber. You know, I have one hundred seventy five thousand plus subscribers. You know, um, across the board, we have a lot of activity. But that that day, May twenty sixth of two thousand nine, was the day that was like, mm. dude, that something's just not right. I felt it, and then when Tommy did that, it was it was yeah. Now I gotta go. Gotta do yeah. this. Yeah. That obviously is something huge. Yeah. 
what about give me something positive that affected you profoundly? Um, there's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my father um that adopted me and didn't wasn't really able to raise me, but he turned himself around with rehab and said, so now we're best friends. You know, we text oh, every day, great. we talk every day, or talk every Sunday. He, he's somebody that I can't live or stay in a house with more than two or three days, you know, because we're kind of both alphas, right? But um, but he's still my best friend. So yeah, my father. That's 100%. awesome. That's awesome. So what makes you a rule breaker? I don't care what people think ever, <laughs> you know, as long as I haven't did those four things, you know, as long as I have not hurt you, disrespect you, owe you, or judge you, right? I do not care. And that comes, it goes across the board. I value work for my clients to do it. I don't have to do it. You know, I'm blessed to have invested in a lot of stuff that if I didn't want, if I, didn't, I just don't have to work. And I'm not trying to sound arrogant. I love to work. It's, it's something, but I just don't care what people think, you know, about. Me. And, and if you're successful, like you, with being an actress, I'm sure you had to go up against a lot of other people readings you know, it, it, an audition. And, and so you just got to just put anything of your ego. Yeah, ego's edging God out, E-G-O, yep. right? So yep. it's like, just set that aside and you'll find that if you just don't care, I'm not saying don't care, like F you, you know, just, <laughs> hey, you know what? You don't like the way I do things. Can you explain why? Right. And if they say, no, I just don't like, it. okay, very good, man. I'll love you from afar and just get the hell out of here. You know, yep. <laughs> it's just how it is with me. I just don't care. I guess that would be why I'm a rule breaker. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you have like rule breaker written all over you. So I, mean. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. And, and take that as was, a compliment. Yeah. yeah. And some of it comes from an abandonment where I, my abandonment issues where I try to show off to get attention. Right. And that kind of bit it. But then I really had awesome mentors between Sam Mizraka, Gary Shapiro, guys that took me under their wing were like, listen, dude, you're an idiot. You're acting like an idiot. We love your independence, but you're hurting people as you're going along. You're mm. disrespecting people as you're going along, you know? And that was a huge wake-up call. Again, if I didn't hurt you, disrespect you, owe you, or judge you, then that's it. And I, am I at fault of those things? Absolutely, I can be. I can judge people. On You know, it's we're human, mm -hmm. you know? But if you call me on it, I'm going to apologize profusely and ask for forgiveness, and that's it, you know? So it's, again, I just don't care. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So where can people find you, Scott? Oh, you can find us at time to shine today.com. Um, you can call us uh, at our hotline at 561-440-3830. Um, in or the time to shine today podcast on all directories. And I had awesome people like you on it. It was a blast. It was really good. You had like yeah, I had, 11, I had a lot of fun. 12, I had a lot 12,000 pure downloads. That's pretty oh, damn good. That's pretty not awesome. Not too bad. Not yeah. too shabby. Really good. So yeah. for everybody out there listening, again, I'm going to put it in the show notes. So make sure that you check out Scott's podcast, The Time, or it's actually not The, it's Time to Shine Today. Yeah. And uh, you're going to have, I think you will have fun. I've listened to a bunch of yours. I always come away with something. <laughs> Lots of energy out there. Yeah. Yeah. And for everybody that's out there listening or watching, I just want to remind you about some of the fabulous things that my friend Scott said. And because you're all special out there and remember what you do, the decisions that you make will affect your outcome. And he also talked about the vibe of the tribe. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that will bring you up, not drag you down. And I loved your analogy about the car. So if any time, if anybody is out there not having a great day, maybe looking in the past, looking in the rear view mirror, remember you learn from all this that stuff, even if it's not good, you yeah. learned from all that. Yeah. And maybe some of that stuff will bring a smile to your face, yeah. but what's out in front of you is your future and you need to put it out there because you're special. There's no one mm -hmm. else like you and you can create a ripple effect that will create a giant tsunami if you let it. So again, I want to welcome my guest, Scott Ferguson, and thank him uh, for being here on the show. And Scott, you have something to say, I could tell. 
just no, by I'm just so blessed to be here. I love to <laughs> I love to rock the mic with people that do it for the intention and not the attention. You know what I'm saying? I yes. love that about yes. you. You know, and that you and I, it, uh, just we vibe. You're part of the tribe. I'm, you know, and, and that's right. You know, and we do it scared. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what's fantastic. I love, I love that. Yes, and go out there and do it scared. Yes. Doesn't matter if you don't know how to do it. Get You're your ass in gear, right? You right. Don't know, get your ass. And Leah Woodford, a good friend of mine, I speak for her and I've had her out. You know, we said, get your asking gear. And I'm like, yes, that's awesome. Ask. There people are wanting to answer, you know. So yeah, yeah love it. That's the best thing all. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks again, Scott. Thanks. Love your guts, K Dub. <laughs>